Hello guys, welcome back to Z Physics. Today we're going to be going through the multiple choice questions of the British Physics Olympiad Senior Challenge from 2018. Well, let's get started. The first question is that the thickness of a page in this exam paper is approximately. This is a classic estimation question. First off, it's not going to be one millimeter because if it was one millimeter, we'll be able to measure it with a ruler. If we take a ruler to a piece of paper, we're going to see that it's nowhere near a uh, millimeter. It's about a tenth of it. So I'm going to go for the correct answer being B. 10 millimeters is obviously not going to be this one. 0.01 millimeter is just way too small. For so let's go through question two. A volt is a joule per coulomb. The unit of electrical resistance R in terms of base units is... Okay, well, let's just first write down our formula for resistance and that is V over I. Now the ohm, which is the unit for electrical resistance in terms of base units, um, this will be equivalent to a joule per coulomb as we're given over here. So a volt is a joule per coulomb divided by the current. Now a joule, what is a joule? Let's think of our favorite formula for energy. You could do this with almost any formula for energy. What I'm going to choose is that E is equal to a half mv squared. So this means that a joule will be a kilogram. So that's the unit of mass. The half has no units times meters per second squared, which means that a joule will be kg m squared s to the power of minus two. Okay, so this is our joule. Now our coulomb is going to be an amp second. The reason for that is because Q is equal to IT. So charge is current times time, therefore a coulomb is an amp multiplied by a second. Okay, well let's put those into our equation. So for the joule, this will be equal to kg m squared s to a power of minus 2 divided by the coulomb which is a s divided by a yet again so let's tidy up our fraction a little bit and what we're going to get is kg m squared s to a power of minus 2 divided by a s so dividing by a is the same as multiplying by 1 over a, like so. This will equal to kg m squared. Uh, let's bring this s to the power of minus 2 down there. And what we're going to get is when we times the two a's, a squared s to the power of minus 3. So this will be equivalent to our answer being A. So let's go through question number three. We have a student has to solve a difficult problem calculating the speed of an astronomical object V, which involves masses m1 and m2 and an acceleration A. The age of the object T and the speed of light C. He tries several times, each time getting a different answer. Finally, he runs out of time and has to pick one of the answers. Which one is the best option? Okay, well, this is a classic example of, the, of an equation needing to have the correct units. It has to be what is known as dimensionally correct. The units on the left are meters per second because that's the unit for speed so for each of those meters per second will be the unit on the left and because an equation has to be dimensionally correct the unit on the right has to be also meters per second so whatever all of these quantities add up to or multiply to it has to be meters per second 
we can immediately discount most of the answers. Why is that? Because M1 plus M2 is going to give us kilograms. There is nothing to cancel out the, those kilograms. So it will be kilograms multiplied by the units of acceleration, multiplied by time, divided by the, by the speed of light. So this will leave, still leaves kilograms multiplied by some other quantities. Very, very similar here. So we have kilograms here times time, and we have kilograms times something else. So it's not going to be B as well. Uh, looking at C, we're going to have kilograms squared. So uh, that's even more far off from the correct answer because gonna, that's going to multiply M1 and M2. So the only correct answer will have to be D. The reason for that is because here we have M1 divided by M2, so it's going to be kilograms divided by kilograms. So that is completely enough to choose the correct answer because it will not have the kilograms. We can do that really quickly. Additionally, C squared uh, divided by AT, um, this here will have units. Let's do this properly, actually. So the units on the left are meters per second, just for practice, extra practice. The units on the right are going to be kilograms divided by kilograms times the units of C squared are m squared s to the power of minus 2 divided by acceleration, which is m s to the power of minus 2 meters per second squared times the unit of time, which is seconds so this will give us uh, s to the power of minus 2 divided by s to the power of minus 3 so that's going to be in total ms to the power of minus 1 so for d the units on the left are the same as the units on the right okay guys well let's have a go at question 4 so the number of atoms in a typical coarse grain of sand found on a beach is approximately okay 10 to the 4 way too small 10 to the 8 way too small as well 10 to the 46 is way too big this is closer to the number of atoms in the observable universe so the correct answer will have to be 10 to the power of 20. now a different number to remember that might become quite useful is that the number of electrons in a human body for instance is about 10 to the 28. So you're made of about 10 to the power of 28 electrons. So a grain of sand is going to have a smaller number of atoms compared to a human body. So 10 to the 20 will have to be the correct answer. This is just a useful number to keep, uh, to keep in your head. Final question, we have a beaker of water sitting on the top hand balance, then when a student sticks his finger in the water, the reading on the balance, what happens to it? Well, anytime we add an object into the beaker, this object will experience an up thrust, which will be pointing upwards. Now, by Newton's third law, Every force, when, or when two bodies interact, they exert equal and opposite forces on each other. In GCSE, you would have learned that every force has an equal and opposite reaction, meaning that the two systems, the two objects here, are the molecules of water and the student's finger. So if you push down on the water, the water will push back at you. So if there's an up thrust, which will be acting upwards, this means there's going to be an additional force, which will be acting downwards. So this means that the reading on the top hand balance will actually be increasing. I don't know, let's say by five grams. Uh, obviously, you can calculate or do the experiment and calculate the exact value, but this is just for illustration purposes. So the reading will increase due to Newton's third law. Okay, folks, well, hopefully this video was useful. Uh, feel free to join us for more solutions to the British Physics Olympiad. And if you found this useful, please consider subscribing. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.